Stay tuned after the movie for VC Andrews Behind the Saga to get a look at the making of the film. Scan the QR code now for more on VC Andrews Dawn. My mother once told me that she and my father named me Dawn because I was born at the break of day. That was the first of a thousand lies my parents would tell me and my brother Jimmy. Of course, we wouldn't know they were lies. Not for a long time. Not until the day the strangers came to take us away. Jimmy, Dawn, it's moving day. Come on, get the let out. <laughs> Jimmy, I got half the car loaded already. Come on, let's check a leg. I'm just tie my shoe. Yeah, well, you can tie your shoe in the car. Put a shirt on, would you? Dawn, get dressed already. In 1973, don't you think we could trade this thing in for something that's not from the 50s? This old girl's got another 100,000 miles in. All right, everybody, bring it in. Come on. Who are we? We're the, We're the Lawn, Lawn Champs. Champs. What does that mean? Family, family together, together, family, family forever. forever. Hey, shut the hell up down there. I'm trying to sleep. Okay, then. Let's hit the road. <laughs> The extra space is going to be perfect for the new baby. Right. Just like you said last time and the three times before that. I'm excited about this one. It's hard to get excited about a new place when we always pick up and move all the time. Well, this will be the final time we move. Promise, Dawn. Virginia. Said something about a job at a school? The Emerson Peabody School. Just so happens to be one of the fanciest schools in the state. And I'll give you a guess at who the new head of maintenance is. Paul Newman? Close. Me. Although a lot of people make that same mistake. And you want to hear the best part? Kids who go to Emerson Peabody go on to great things. And... They got a music department like you wouldn't believe. You want to sing? This is where you go. All right, Dad, I'm getting excited. Yeah. Be excited. I really fought for this job, though. This time's different. And that's a promise.
You happy? You know how happiness starts, don't you? Dad, come on, really? Happiness starts with a smile. <laughs> it's contagious. Catch it now. <laughs> it's a duet, Don. Just put one on and your troubles will be gone. Cause happiness starts with a smile. Hey, songbirds. Let's, let's be quiet. <laughs> Come on, guys. Let's move in. You're carrying the heavy stuff. <sighs> Snobby, rich pukes. I'll just give him a chance. It's our first day. They don't all look so bad. All right, ladies, let's move it. Something burning in here? I, I think it's coming from there. Clara Jean, get over here. Yes, Ms. Collins? Explain this. It's not mine. It's your locker. Well, I don't know how it got in there. How do I know that the new poor kid didn't plant it on me? I, I just saw smoke coming from the locker. Detention after school today, Clara Jean. Don't be late. Let's go. in the wash, Smitchy. Hi, I'm Louise. Don. Boy, did you pick the absolutely worst person to cheese off of this school. I didn't know whose locker it was. I just... Saw smoke. Yeah, well, where there's smoke, Clara Jean comes from a big wealthy hotel family. Doesn't everyone here come from money? Yeah, but there's money and then there's cutler money. Clara Jean's the one who decides in this school who's in and who's out. I've always been out, Sova. Welcome to Rock Bottom. <sighs> you want to be outcasts together? <laughs> come on, you can sit with me. for the baby. What happened here? Oh, nothing much. Just some of my school pals trying to make me feel more at home by giving my clothes a toilet bath. What? They didn't really do that. I'm sure they'll all repent on their deathbeds. Well, they're not getting away with it. I'll call the principal in the morning. No, you will not. I can handle it. It's just some rich girl with cutler money. Cutler money? Yes. Apparently, I pissed off the heiress to the famous Cutler family fortune, which I guess is the wrong thing to do on the first day. Not the hotel family. You've actually heard of these people? I've heard of them. What's their kid doing going to school all the way out here in Richmond? Isn't this where all the rich kids go? She lives in the dorms. Mom. Come on, don't worry about it. Donna, come here. 
Why don't you just avoid this girl? Hmm? I mean, if she's a bully, just try to have nothing to do with her, okay? I will if she will. Carlos, at every school in the country. I mean, do we have to move again? Sally, how are they ever going to get this kind of opportunity again? And it's been so many years. I don't know there's a reason to worry it's going to come out. We're not the only lawn champs in the world. I told Don to just avoid them. Well, that'll probably be enough. I'll tell Jimmy, too. I mean, there's nothing for us to be nervous about yet. Okay. Class, this is what we call perfect pitch. I mean, really, that is professional level, Dawn. Thank you. Clara Jean, looks like you might have some competition for soloist at this year's spring recital. Mm -hmm. Listen, Claire Jean, I didn't mean to get you in trouble the other day. I just saw a smoking locker. Maybe we can start over? Okay. Do you want to be best friends? I'm just saying there's no reason for us to be enemies. Well, there are a few reasons. I mean, you're the janitor's daughter. <laughs> That's why you're here, isn't it? You're a charity case. Okay. Looks like we won't be braiding each other's hair. If you want me to forgive you for ratting me out, okay. I can forgive you for that. But for being poor white trash? Honey, that is unforgivable. <sighs> yeah, I could have told you that wouldn't work. Worth a try. And there's no way they're choosing Clara Jean for the spring recital over you. Hell, if Karen Carpenter and Barbara Streisand hear you sing, they'll be dunking your clothes in the toilet, too. <laughs> you, uh, mind if I sit here? Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Philip. I saw you the other day, and I've been trying to work up the nerve to introduce myself. Um, uh, I'm, I'm Don. Do you want to go for a drive after school? I know you're new. I figured maybe you'd let me show you around. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, no. I, I just, I mean, I had, I'd have to ask my parents. Oh, that's cool. Uh, you ask them, and maybe we can go tomorrow. Yeah, that, that'd be cool. You gotta say yes. Mm. What? Philip R. Cutler is only the most popular guy in school. Well, what can I say? He's, he's got good taste. <laughs> and he also happens to be the brother of one Clara Jean Cutler. You call a cab? Uh, uh. Oh, hi. Hop in. Philip, I told you I have to ask my parents. It's just a ride home. You know your sister hates my guts. My sister hates everyone's guts. Well, mine, she wants to cook and eat. Well, there goes her diet. <laughs> Listen, on the surface, Clara Jean is spoiled, mean, and stupid. But deep down where it really counts, she's also selfish, spiteful, and full of hatred. Oh, so you're saying I just need to get to know her better? Just let her know she can't get to you. Right now, the best way I know how to do that is to let her brother drive you home. Come on. Jimmy, you wake. 
cock you made about Philip earlier when you saw him drop me off? What did you mean by that? Oh, come on, Donna. I was just nodding off. Why do you think he's a creep? I just hear how him and his buddies talk. That's all. What do they say? I'm just looking out for you. Isn't that what you want in a big brother? Philip hasn't been anything but friendly to me. That guy doesn't want to be your friend. Okay, just because he comes for money doesn't mean he's a bad guy. I'm just saying he's a guy. Maybe assume I can handle myself sometimes. <laughs> you? Guys? Wake up. Wow, Dad, this is a new record. We've been here like a week. Would you just get up? Baby's coming. Dad, calm down. Everything's gonna be okay. Either I'm having deja vu, or I know you. You used to work here? <laughs> Not that I remember. You must have me confused with someone else. Huh. Sometimes people mistake him for Paul Newman. <laughs> Mr. Longshot, everybody's good. Oh. Mother and daughter. <laughs> Hey, I'm still your favorite. Remember that. Oh, <laughs> I'm worried about mom. She's as strong as they come. Maybe, but it's been a week. I think we should take her back to the hospital. Why? Like, it's just gonna tell me she needs rest and vitamins. I don't need to spend a hundred dollars we don't have on that. Let me hold my little girl. A fun. Can you give daddy a smile? Huh? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> That's my happy girl. That's my happy baby fun. What, are you following me or something? Why am I always looking at your ugly face every time I turn around? You probably think my brother is actually interested in you. Only because he says he is. <laughs> you think you're the only girl he's told that to? Philip makes girls like you into mothers once a month. I think you are so threatened by this poor white trash that you go out of your way to keep putting me down. How sad. Let's get in the car. She has no idea what's coming. Well, what do you think? Wow. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you folks for me for, uh, for letting you come. I didn't actually ask them is what the truth is. Rebel. I'm 16. Why do I need permission just to go for a ride? Well, you're safe with me. For now. I bet you've never been kissed before. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> guessing. You have this innocent thing about you. I don't know. Fine. I've, I've never had a boyfriend. We move around a lot. Okay, but I didn't say anything about a boyfriend. I just want to know if you've ever been kissed. Stop. I mean... You don't have to answer, I'm just... I'm curious. Okay. No. I knew it. I'm really embarrassed now. You happy? No, I'm not... I'm not trying to embarrass you, really. I just... I think you're really cool. I'm sorry. Forgiven? Sure. Hey, 
Ethan. Sorry, I just... Look, don't... Don't laugh. I've just... I've never felt this way after just meeting somebody. Really? Yeah, really. <laughs> but look, I don't want things to move too fast either. And when it comes down to it, I like to think I'm a southern gentleman. Maybe best just to take you home. Well, I, I mean, we don't have to leave right now. <laughs> That's it? What do you think we were gonna do? Well, I mean, it is Philip Cutler. I don't believe any of those stories. We just kissed a little and then he drove me home. Was it okay if I just imagine it was a lot dirtier? Hey, look at this! <laughs> it's Jimmy the janitor's kid. Is your daddy gonna clean that up? office now. Your father is going to hear about this. Don, stop worrying about Jimmy. Your father's going to find him. What's he going to do when he does? <laughs> I mean, you should have seen Dad when Jimmy came out of the principal's office. I thought he was going to kill him. Your father just really wants what... <coughs> hey, are you okay? I'm fine. <clears throat> Mom, you're not fine. You're getting worse. No, sweetheart. It just sounds bad. I'm feeling much better today. Really. Mom, you sound awful. Shh, 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 shh. It's starting to rain. My goodness, you're you're gonna catch pneumonia. Get this off. You gonna tell me where you were? I was gonna run away. But I didn't have any money, so I came back. Did you really do that? <laughs> Things are so great here. I mean, you'd leave me just like that? <sighs> what has gotten into you lately? Running away? Getting into fights? I'm sorry about that. I tried to steer through those guys. They just wouldn't let up. How hard is it to not get into a fight? Sometimes real hard, Don. They called you a slut. I'd do it again. I love you for defending me, Jimmy, but I don't want you to get hurt because people are telling lies about me. I'd never actually leave you. Don't worry. <sighs> One of them knew how to punch. Dawn, hurry up. Can't be late for your recital. Bridget Bardot, how'd you get in here? And where's my daughter? Please, Daddy, I'm nervous enough without this. Why? You've been rehearsing for a month. <laughs> Not with an audience. 
You look so grown up. God, I remember when your mom and I brought you home. I swear it could have been yesterday. I wish he felt well enough to go. Maybe you should stay here with her. And miss your big debut. There's not enough wild horses on this earth, baby girl. So when you want to go? Oh, um, I already have a ride. With who? Philip Cutler's coming to get me. I thought we told you to stay away from him. <laughs> yeah, with no good reason. In fact, no reason at all. Now, I gave you my reasons. But would you just, for once, trust that I may know more than you? Consumption. She should have been brought in some time ago. I love you. I love you. Always remember that. Please don't ever think badly of us. Why would I ever think badly of you? If I knew... Hey, Dad. Dad, do not start blaming yourself. I tried to get her to come, and she wouldn't. And I didn't listen to you, either. There he is, officer. Plain as day. I knew I recognized you. Poor man, Longchamp? That's me. You're under arrest. Under arrest? What's going on? I love you guys. I love you! Dad! Are you going to tell me what's going on? Where's my brother? Jimmy's okay. He's just being processed. Processed? What about Fern? Fern is safe. Okay. I don't know what's going on here, but I'm telling you it's a mistake. Why is my father being arrested? Don, your father, he's under arrest for kidnapping. Kidnapping? Oh. oh, no. Like, that's a good one. Only I've lived with my father my whole life, and I think I'd have noticed if he had kidnapped someone. So, uh, that's a problem, don't you think? Don, this is gonna come as a shock. So I'll just tell you straight. Your parents kidnapped you. You are 
a baby. That's why you don't remember. This case has been cold for 16 years. Your parents were employees at a hotel back then. Cutler's Cove, down in Hampton, Virginia. Cutler? One night, they just vanished. And so did you. Your real name is Eugenia Cutler. Your real parents are both still alive. You have a brother named Philip and a sister named Clara Jean. Okay, now, now I know that you're just making this all up. It's simply not possible. I, I know them. I go to school with those two people. Dom, it's true. I know this is a lot to absorb. But your father, I mean, who you thought was your father, he's already confessed. I'm very sorry. We sent some officers to your apartment. They gathered up as much of your stuff as they could. Wait a second. Where are we going? I, I need to talk to my brother. I'm afraid you can't right now. Your brother and sister have already been sent to foster care. What? So, where are you taking me? I'm taking you home, Dom. Follow me. So, the long-lost Eugenia. That's not my name. That is your name. May I know who I'm addressing? I'm Lillian Cutler. I'm your grandmother. I was told that I have... that my real parents are here? Yes, well, it's very late. You'll meet them tomorrow. You're returning to us at a very inconvenient time, Eugenia. I'll try to time things out like this better in the future. I'm not only your grandmother. I own this hotel, and I do not tolerate insolence or ingratitude. Is that understood? You have a voice? Yes. I I just don't understand why you're treating me like a derelict who walked in off the street. Did you expect to be treated like some long-lost princess? No, I... Just maybe, like, family. That's exactly how I am treating you. Every member of the Cutler family works. And tomorrow morning, you will start working as a chambermaid. What about school? There's still two weeks left. I'll talk to them and be sure they pass you through to the fall semester. What if they won't do that?
If I say it, they'll do it. If I were you, I'd get some sleep. You've got a hard day's work ahead of you. Thanks, Miss Boston. Wake up. Do you know what time it is? I will not have pictures of this woman in my hotel. That's the only picture I have of my mother. This worthless domestic is not your mother. And if you need pictures of her, use your memory. stories about you before I ever got a job here. They said you were gone for good. No kidding. I came across my grave in the family graveyard. Right. They told me the family put that up in order to move on or something like that. And here you are, not even dead. Mm. Just give me a holler if you have any questions. Thanks. My guy. Eugenia. Um, no, it's... Yes. I'm Randolph. I'm your father. I 
were sure I would never lay my eyes on you again. I just... I just can't believe it. I can't either. I think it's time you met your mother. Anywhere in the world, you must be rapturous to finally be home. I miss my family. Oh, and we've missed you. I could never tell you how much. We looked for you for years. I, I mean, I miss my real family. The people I grew up with. Oh, honey, we are your real family. Though I suppose to you we must be strangers. Of course, my darling, I understand. You'll need time to adjust. Yes. I've been feeling rather poorly lately, but um, I'm just very excited to be reacquainted with you. I can teach you all about etiquette and how to behave in proper society. Oh, and music. I can teach you the piano. I already play the piano. And uh, why would you think I don't know how to behave properly? Oh, well, my dear, there's more to etiquette than just please and thank you. My heart is just sick thinking about the desperate circumstances you grew up in with such a poor family. You're right. We were poor, but my parents loved us and they knew how to raise us. I have a brother and sister I hope to see again. Yes. Well, darling, you do now realize that they aren't really your brother and sister. The best thing for you now is to just try to forget them. This is where you belong now, Eugenia. My name is Dawn. Come with me. I'll make sure they serve you up something nice for lunch. Yes. Yes, of course. You go. You go. We'll have plenty of time to catch up and get to know each other proper. We have all the time in the world. Oh, this is Purnell. He was my very best friend in the whole world. But Lillian had him. Lillian doesn't like cats. What are you doing in here? I, I was just... You're stealing, aren't you? No, I, I wasn't... Don't you go sneaking around in my hotel, ever. Do you understand me? 
Do you understand me? Yes, I understand. Good, Eugenia. Very good. Now go to your room. Let out? Yeah. Hmm. So they told me. I don't even know what to think. Me neither. I keep thinking I'm in this insane dream, but when I wake up, I'm still here. What I mean is, I don't know what to think about us. Us? Philip, there's no us. No, I know. It's. How do you turn it off? Huh? Just like that? I mean, I still feel about you the way I felt before. Obviously, we can't think like that anymore. Can't we? I mean, have your feelings changed? To be honest with you, Philip, I haven't really thought about it. I mean, my whole life has been turned upside down. I, uh, I really want to kiss you. Okay, we can't do that anymore. Couldn't this just be our secret? Right? Are you kidding? No. Simple as that. Have you seen our father? That's gonna be a problem. Ah, Eugenia. Mm. Mrs. Boston tells me you're doing a marvelous job. I sense a promotion sooner than you think. Oh, that's great. Listen, I wrote a letter to my Ormond Longchamp, but I have no idea where to send it. I was hoping you could find out and help me get it to him. Oh, I don't know, Eugenia. Don. I don't believe Mother would want me getting involved in this, and she wouldn't like you corresponding with your kidnapper. Randolph, he was my father for 16 years. I need to get some answers from him. You have to understand that. You need to understand that Mother has some very strict rules. I thought you were supposed to be my father. I had a whole life before this, Randolph. And out of nowhere, I was plunked into this craziness where I'm treated like a servant and nobody is helping me. It's a letter. I'll see to it as soon as I can. I promise. You a laughing riot. You work too hard, Don. You should uh, take a break. Tell that to Grandmother Cutler. Just come with me. I got something to show you. Just leave it. <laughs> Philip, you're going to get me into trouble. I am not. Okay. Okay. Come on. Just follow me, okay? You're gonna tell me what this place is? We used to have a caretaker who lived here. He died a zillion years ago, and nobody else moved in. Just come on. When I was a kid, I used to come here all the time. It was my secret place. I can only assume you brought me here to murder me. <laughs> I wanted to get you alone. I was hoping we could talk. About what? I just can't help but thinking of you as two different people. I mean, there's Don Cutler. And then there's the girl I fell for back at school. Philip. I mean, I'm the first boy you ever kissed. Remember? Philip! This, no! This cottage, it can be our place, Don. Okay, the world's out there, but in here we can do anything we want. And nobody needs to... I told you they were in here. What's going on between you and Philip? Nothing. 
I know about the history between the two of you. Nothing happened, and nothing's going to happen. Good. Then from now on, that is your responsibility. You and Philip are never, ever to be alone together. That's fine by me. Good. Then we will consider that matter settled. Now, the next matter at hand is your name, which seems to be the source of some confusion. Nothing's confusing about my name. Excellent. Then we're in agreement once again. You spelled Don wrong. You will wear that whenever you are in uniform. Did I, did I do something to deserve this? I believe we're done in here. Maybe this is something I should talk over with mother and father. Why would you assume that either of them would defy me? He said he would mail this. Everyone at this hotel does exactly as I tell them to do. That includes your mother, your father, and you. Sissy, what do you know about the night I was taken away from here? Well, like I told you, that happened long before I ever got here. Yeah, but... Everyone around here talks to each other. I know you know something. I've heard all kinds of things. Everything from evil servants to Bigfoot has something to do with it. So, you don't want to know from me. Mrs. Austin is the one who knows everything through Sonoma Cutler's Cove. No, sir -y. I don't tell stories. Don't fool yourself. Miss Boston, I'm not trying to get you into trouble. Nobody will tell me anything about what happened to me. Don't I have a right to know? Not for me, you don't. Miss Boston, please. It was me this happened to, and for some reason, I'm the one being punished for it. Can't you see that? All I know is that Sally Longchamp had a stillborn baby. She never told me that. It was a terrible thing, but it was right around when you were born. And she and Orman, they were crazy with grief. They snuck in one night and they just took you. To replace their stillborn baby? And I don't know why else they would have done it. But your daddy Randolph, he did everything he could to find you. Until your grandma put a stop to that. She had the gravestone made. But that is all that I know. So don't ask me anything more. You were given a name tag. Where is it? Oh, I guess it must have fallen off somewhere. Okay, so this is going to be a contest of wills, is it? Fine. You go to your room and stay there. I have a new name tag printed up for you, and if you elect not to wear it, you won't be fed until you change your mind. Hello. Dawn. Sis, I heard you haven't eaten anything in two days. You must be so hungry. Oh, thanks, but if that's for me, I'm trying to cut out sugar. Mm. Mm. I don't know why you're making life so difficult for yourself. Everyone always gives Grandma what she wants. Not everyone. You won't look so smug when you're starving to death.
There's something wrong. Randolph? Is that you? Yes, it's it's me. Why did you give the letter to grandmother when you said you would help me? She You you mean she didn't send it? She she told me she would. Randolph, she's a liar. Don. You really shouldn't talk like that and Really, this this whole thing can be sorted out if you just wear the name tag. It's, it's it's such a little thing, really. Okay, but why does she even care? It's not like anyone wants me in this family. Now, Don, you you know that isn't true. What do I have left but my name? I'll tell you what. Let's just compromise. You wear that silly little name tag during working hours and I'll see to it that I get your letter out personally. That way everyone gets something out of it. Can we do that? Good girl. He's right there in the door. Uh, Listen, you need to come with me. Hey, what's going on? You'll see. Just come on, okay? Philip, I'm not going back in there with you. No, it's not what you think. You just have to trust me, okay? I was in the neighborhood. My God, Jimmy! What are you doing here? I, I thought I would never see you again. Foster care wasn't for me. You really? <laughs> well, I gave myself early parole. I told him he could stay for a few days. See, I've got one or two redeeming qualities. Philip, thank you so much. I, I don't even know what to say. Don't worry about it. As long as you're happy. I'll leave you too long to catch up. I can't believe this. Come on, sit. <sighs> You would have guessed this, huh? I wanted to see you at the police station, but they wouldn't let me. I've been so worried about Fern. Do you have any idea where they took her? I don't know. I know the dad's a liar, though. To me, I mean, what was he supposed to say? By the way, Dawn, I kidnapped you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to make of any of this. I haven't slept in a day and a half. Close your eyes. I'll stay with you until you fall asleep. What? <laughs> I don't know. I've just always had this voice in the back of my head that told me that you're just a little bit different than the rest of the family. I'm not wearing the color name proudly if that's what you're getting at. Are they really that bad? <laughs> I hate it here. I have never been so lonely in my life. <laughs> Come with me then. I would in a second. But you're better off alone. If I go with you, they'll just... Come looking for me and then we'd both get caught. You got a pet gerbil or something? Just a snack for later. Miss Eugenia? I'm gonna need you to come with me. Mrs. Wormser in room 237 is missing a very expensive necklace. All right, I see where this is going. I expect you to deny stealing it. Of course I deny it. 
I've never stolen anything in my life. You can search my room if you want. <laughs> you don't think we've done that already? Your room is not the only place. You might have hidden it. Shall I empty my pockets then? Undress. What? You can either do it voluntarily or Mr. Hornbeck will do it for you. This is ridiculous. Either you can tell Mr. Hornbeck to proceed or you can tell Mr. Hornbeck to leave the room. The choice is yours for the next five seconds. Would you please leave Mr. Hornbeck? You realize this proves nothing. It proves something about you. Look at this. The newspaper mentions a Miss Dalton. She was a nurse who was sitting by my crib while I slept. It doesn't make sense. How could I be stolen right from under her nose? Maybe she just left the room for a minute. Maybe. But they kept her on after. Look. This is her with Clara Jean who was born after me. I'm not sure what this proves, Don. Lillian fires people for folding napkins wrong. Why would she let this woman look out for another grandchild when one was kidnapped on her watch? You're right. It doesn't make sense. Listen. I really appreciate you having me here. And I'm feeling back to normal. So, probably should move on. Oh, you... Jimmy, you can't. You you just got here. I can't hide here forever, Don. You are the only person I have in the world. You are so strong. Okay? You're gonna be all right? Please. Please don't leave. Not yet. You're just never gonna let up on this, are you? Who is this Miss Dalton? I mean, did you ever meet her? She and I were friends. And it wasn't unusual for Mrs. Dalton to step out of the nursery when you were sleeping. She was your nurse, not your bodyguard. So, the night I was taken... The night you were taken was just like any other night. Mrs. Dalton will wait for you to be asleep each night. And she'd usually walk down the hall and sit with me for a while. Not long, just for a little rest. And then she'd go back and turn in herself. But on that night... But why was she still allowed to be Clara Jean's nurse after that? Well, I figured nobody blamed Mrs. Dalton for something no one could have predicted. Do you know where Miss Dalton is now? You won't get anything out of her. She's old now. She's gone funny in the head. I know Mrs. Dalton. She's not that funny in the head. Sissy, were you eavesdropping? Uh, yes. And I didn't know she was your nurse back in the day. Just an old lady in the neighborhood who me and some of the others have out sometimes. So then she's not far from here. Maybe now I can finally get some answers. That's great, Tom. What's the matter? Nothing. I, just, I should probably get going. But you... Don. It's hard for me to be here with you. I mean... You were my sister, and now you're not, and... Why does that make it hard? It, it's still me. I don't know how to describe it, and I'm really sure I don't want to. I mean, it, sh it shouldn't be weird, but it is. Jimmy, just, just tell me. 
I don't see you the same anymore. First, you were a long champ, right? And now, you're a cutler. And what does that mean? Don, I've just, I've just been having confusing thoughts about you ever since all this happened. I've been looking at you differently lately. I mean, you're my sister, for God's sake. No, but, I mean, you're right. I'm not. Wow. You are the closest person in the world to me. You can tell me anything. I mean, I... I just don't think I've ever thought that way, you know, like... Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. It's cool. But we aren't related in any way. Like, what if we just met today? I'm Don Cutler. It's nice to meet you. Jimmy Longchamp. Pleasure's all mine. Tell me about yourself, Jimmy Longchamp. Do you have any brothers or sisters? I have a little sister. Just one? Just one. <laughs> Look, Jimmy, if this is the reason you thought you needed to leave, I don't think you should. We'll figure this out. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> dying for some girl talk, so I figured I would just stop in. What a pleasant surprise. So, you meet any cute boys lately? Mr. Garvey from room 237 has nice hair for an 80-year-old. <laughs> well, you dirty dog. <laughs> Your boyfriend must be all kinds of jealous. My what? Your boyfriend. Your fella. You're steady. What are you blabbering about, Clara Jean? It's just that I saw you coming out of Philip's secret place the other day, so I figured that I would listen at the window last night. Goodness, the things I heard you two lovebirds talking about. Sarah Jean, listen to me. I knew you had to be a slut. Why else would Philip be interested in you? And maybe the police would be interested in a runaway hiding in Cutler's Cove. Clara Jean. Don't call the cops on Jimmy, please. I have to, Don. It's just the right thing to do. He's a runaway. He's breaking the law. Okay. What do you want? Well, first thing I want to know is how you could talk to your brother like that. I mean, you know, he's not actually your brother, but still. Ugh. What do you want, really? I want you to do the right thing, Don. I want you to confess. To what? To stealing that necklace that disappeared. I didn't steal it, Clara Jean. You sure? Are you positive that it isn't under your mattress? I'm positive I didn't put it there. Anyway, those are my terms. Just think it over. While I go say hi to Grandma. your grandma. There's your thief. Well, here we sit with a liar and a thief. Yes, but can she be fully blamed for that? I mean, consider who raised her. We'll tell Mrs. Wormser that we found her necklace in the laundry. And as for our thief, do you have anything at all to say for yourself? I was framed. I fully expected you to blame someone else, but your own sister? Have you no shame at all? Only that I'm a cutler.
I knew you wouldn't keep up your end of the deal, Don. Oh, don't hate me for not keeping mine. <laughs> Let him go. He, he's not a criminal. Ma'am, we have to take him back to foster care. Please, just uh, uncuff him. Get her inside. Eugenia, please. They're just doing their job. Forget it. I'll be 18 in a couple months. I'll come back for you. Okay? Philip, get out of here. I heard about Jimmy getting caught. Do you want to talk Philip, about it? I mean it. Get out. I just, I just can't stand to see you upset, Don. If there was some way I could take away this pain from you, you know I would do it. What are you doing? I just want to make you feel better somehow. Okay, Philip, I'm asking you to leave. Don, you know my feelings haven't changed for you. And we talked about this. I, I just can't stop thinking about the things that I was going to teach you. <laughs> Don. You're my brother. Stop. No, you want no. this as much as I do. No. Get out. You don't have to bite me. Don, it's me. I just wanted to let you know that I got your letter off. Try to look on the bright side, Don. For some reason, everything works out for the better when people do what Mother says. Proper etiquette for maids is to knock before entering a room. Why did you rat out Jimmy? And don't say it's because I broke some deal because you would have done it anyway. I like making your life miserable, Dawn. What did I ever do to deserve this? It was supposed to be my solo at the recital. But then one day you just show up and ruin everything. I don't buy that. That's no reason to hate my guts. I've hated you my entire life. I had to grow up living in the shadow of poor, lost Eugenia. It was easy for everyone to project whatever they wanted onto you so they could think that you were perfect. Do you have any idea what it's like playing second fiddle to a ghost? And that's my fault? <laughs> sure, that was mine. But now I have the chance to make your life a living hell, and that is exactly what I'm going to do. Never let your guard down around me, Don. Watch out for me, always! Hi, um, I'm looking for Miss Dalton. You're the Miss Dalton who used to be a nurse at Cutler's Cove? Yes, dear. What is this about? My name is... Well, my given name is Eugenia Cutler. Does that mean anything to you? I was told you might not remember stuff from a long time ago, but I'm hoping you can still help me. My dear. I believe the reason that I am sitting here in this wheelchair is for my penance for my part in what happened that night. It's providence that brought you back to me. 
our chance at, at redemption. I've prayed for this. I'm sorry, I, I don't understand. There's guilt to go around for the night you disappeared. And I suppose it, it began with your mother. Your grandmother never approved of Laura Jean. And I suppose she saw some things in your mother that Randolph was blind to. After your brother Philip was born, your mother seemed to grow bored. And the open secret was she strayed, often. Her preference was singers. Those flings would last only as long as the singers played the hotel and moved on. Very few of them ever came back. But at least one of them left something. Something unplanned. Unplanned something was me. Your grandmother tried to force your mother to end the pregnancy, but somehow your mother convinced Lillian to let Randolph think the baby was his. And I suppose for her son's sake, Lillian went along with it. And then she decided she didn't want you around anymore. But how to get rid of you? It was about this time that Armand and Sally Longchamp suffered a miscarriage. Your grandmother saw an opportunity in that. She would replace the baby they lost with you. She gave me a year's salary to turn the other way. At the time, I told myself no one at Cutler's Cove wanted you anyway, so why not let parents who would love you take you? There hasn't been a day gone by that I haven't begged the good Lord for forgiveness. I know you felt you were just doing the right thing and they were good parents. It seems to me you're the best thing that godforsaken family ever had and you're the one they gave away. My darling, so good to see you. You've come for a visit. I came to talk. Well, I've been wanting to talk to you for quite some time. I think it is long past time that we update your wardrobe. It's longer past time we talked about my kidnapping. Oh, why do you want to dwell on things like that? It's in the past. You're home now. Let's rejoice about that. Mother... Besides, I'm, I'm not feeling very well today. Maybe you should go and talk with your father instead. Which father? Your husband or my real father? Is this him or is it someone else? Why must we talk about disagreeable things? You should go. I need to sleep. You knew about grandmother's plot for my kidnapping. You were part of it. John, what a silly thing to say. Your own daughter. What? makes you think that I would Just ever... tell me why so I can understand. You cannot blame me for that horrible night. Why not? Because it wasn't my choice. Your grandmother has the final word on everything. What could I do? You could have said no. I did a terrible thing. But I'm not a terrible person. What makes a person terrible, Mother, if it isn't the things they do? You are too kind. We simply try to make everybody who stays at the hotel feel like family. Grandmother, can I pull you away for a moment? I need to talk to you. Eugenia, it's not polite to interrupt. We'll talk later. I went to visit my old nurse, Miss Dalton, earlier. Let's talk now. Believe me, if you think things have been unpleasant for you so far, you will dream of these days fondly. You have stretched the limits of my patience as far as they will go. Grandmother, I know everything. I'm sure you think you do. The senile ramblings of a sick old woman. Mother has confirmed everything Miss Dalton told me. A 
All right, fine. Let's assume you know the truth. What of it? Miss Dalton agreed to tell the whole story to the authorities. I'm sure she'll reconsider. I don't think she will. She wants to clear her conscience. Well, she can weigh her conscience against her son. He holds a high position in a company that I own, and she knows if she speaks out against me, her son will end up in the street. And as for your mother, she'll contradict anything she told you on my say-so. So what does that leave you with, Eugenia? Well, grandmother dear, I'm left with me. Maybe Miss Dalton is intimidated by you, and I'm sure mother can be. But now I know the truth. Yes, could you connect me to the Richmond Gazette? Yes, hi, my name is Don Cutler. Who would I speak to about a scandal at the Cutler's Cove Hotel? Yes, I'll hold. Do you really think you're intimidating me? Yes. Maybe you are a cutler, after all. Tell me what you want. I want you to use your influence to get Ormond Longchamp out of jail. I want to be treated decently around here by everyone. In the fall, I want to go to a school with an excellent music department so I can pursue my singing. And one more thing. You're going to call me Dawn. Where the hell is she getting all new clothes? Well, sweetheart, she can't really wear your hand-me-downs for the rest of her life. And besides, your clothes are much too roomy for Eugenia's petite frame. It's Dawn. From now on, that's her name. Please remember that. <clears throat> I've found a school for you. Have you heard of the Bernhardt School for the Arts? No. It's the finest school of its kind in New York City, and you won't find a better place to train as a singer. Is that acceptable? And I'd be living there, in New York, not here? Exactly, like I said beneficial for both of us. So, can we consider that settled? We may. Don, wait. What's this I hear about you're going to New York? Get away from me, Philip. What's the matter? The only reason you're not in jail right now is because Lillian has too much pull with the police in this town and would never let it happen. <gasps> police? What are, you, what are you talking about? The night you tried to rape me? Rape? Don, all girls fight. It's part of the dance. Stop! All those girls were raped. Kicking, screaming, and fighting you was in a dance, Philip. How did I not see what you were on day one? Jimmy knew right away. Hey, now, just... Look, I know right now I can't do anything to you, Philip. I know you have a rich and powerful grandmother who will protect you. But you won't always. Don, you got a phone call. It's long distance. Long distance? Daddy? I got your letter, Dawn. Baby girl, I'm so, so sorry. Dad, you have nothing to be sorry about. I don't blame you for anything you did. I know you were just trying to give me the best life you could. Yeah. You know, I'd like to think that maybe one day you and Jimmy and Fern and me, we can be together again. I don't want to get your hopes up, but I think I can get you out of jail. 
<laughs> Time limit reached. That's my girl. Happiness starts with a smile. It's contagious. Catch it now. Just put one on and your troubles will be gone. Cause happiness starts with a smile. I left Cutler's Cove and dreamt of thousands of people in an audience listening to me sing. But I could never go back to the way things had once been. When I had truly believed in fairy tales and happy endings. Those days were gone. Don, your father, he's under arrest for kidnapping. Kidnapping? Oh, oh no, like, that's a good one. Only I've lived with my father my whole life, and I think I'd have noticed if he had kidnapped someone. So, uh, that's a problem, don't you think? Don, your parents kidnapped you. I think the VC Andrews stories makes sense to be on Lifetime because of how many twists and turns there are. There is so much fun, juicy drama. Melodrama and soap opera and gothic romance. They are stories that can be difficult to get in other places. The V.C. Andrews stories tell intergenerational dramatic stories about women and Lifetime is the home for that. I would describe Dawn as a young, innocent girl who is put through some of the hardest things you can imagine, but throughout all of it, she just is resilient. We landed the jackpot with Breck. She's in nearly every scene of the first three films, um, so she had very little downtime. Her acting skills are really developed, and she was able to play a teen and somebody in their 20s and somebody in their 30s. I do consider Dawn to be a good person. I think she wants to see the best in people. I do feel like she's jaded because she has been through a lot, so she has trouble trusting people, but she wants people to be good, and she wants to see that in everyone. Do you uh, mind if I sit here? Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Philip. I saw you the other day, and I've been trying to work up the nerve to introduce myself. Uh, I'm, I'm Dawn. So her first love interest, Yumi, it's Philip Cutler. He's suave, he has this sexy Mustang, he's very confident, but he is trouble. And when they learn they're actually brother and sister, she tries to cut it off and he's still interested, which causes issues. Unlike in Flowers in the Attic, when the attraction starts between Dawn and Philip in this movie, we don't think they're brother and sister. They, they've just met for the first time. So we can really get behind this budding romance. As a producer, one of the things that made it easier to tell this story was that Breck, as Dawn, is just so grounded. Her reactions are what our reactions are as an audience member. She's attracted to Philip at the beginning, as we are, and it's once she learns all this information about him that she realizes this can't happen. <laughs> I wanted to get you alone. I was hoping we could talk. About what? I just can't help but thinking of you as two different people. I mean, there's Don Cutler, 
And then there's the girl I fell for back at school. Philip. I mean, I'm the first boy you ever kissed. Remember? Philip. No. There's a lot of hard scenes for me where I'm being aggressively talked to by a guy that I'm not interested in. It definitely can take emotionally a lot out of me. And it is so nice just to have that super kind, supportive director and crew and cast. <laughs> Resetting. <laughs> did it, did it again. Maybe the actors themselves spent so much time together um, and they really grew to sort of respect each other and they became real friends. I feel so blessed to be working with the cast that I'm working with. Like I'm hanging out with them on weekends because hanging out with them 15 hours a day apparently isn't enough for me. I love you for defending me, Jimmy, but I don't want you to get hurt because people are telling lies about me. I'd never actually leave you. Don't worry. I think Jimmy's a great person. I think he has a heart of gold. I think he loves his family. He loves his dawn. I think the biggest thing he's got to work on is loving himself. But all in all, I think Jimmy's a great dude. Good intentions. It's hard for me to be here with you. I mean, you were my sister and now you're not. And Why does that make it hard? It, it's still me. I don't know how to describe it. And I'm really sure I don't want to. As the story unfolds, we also find out that Jimmy's kind of had some confusing feelings he's always felt like dawn's a little bit different and he's always admired her and now he realizes that she's not actually his sister i think audiences will love how these stories just keep you on your toes just so insane there's happiness but there's sadness and emotion and love and hate and drama what's going to be fun about the next three movies is you're going to get to see Don navigate the world. You're going to see this young woman who has tremendous talent try to figure out um, how to move forward, and you're going to see her fall in love. You're going to see her make some serious mistakes, and you're going to see her navigate how to get out of the traps of her family history.